On today's Saints Happy Hour podcast, we're going to yell at Nick Wright because he's Nick wrong. His stupid Saints takes are driving me crazy. Thomas, hit that intro. Welcome to Saints Happy Hour podcast. We never skip a drink day. Budridge wants to know how are the doctors doing. That, that ended. Now grab a drink and enjoy the show. All right, everybody, welcome to another edition of Saints Happy Hour podcast. As always, we are presented by Hard Hide Ponchatoula Strawberry Whiskey. I'm Ralph Marlboro. I'm joined by Kevin. I got Thomas running the show back in Poland. All right, today we're going to do our normal Saints gambling tips, prop bets. We're going to get to that in a minute. Before we start the show, Kevin, the Saints takes are stupid Yet enjoyable because the Saints are 2-0 and under the talk of the NFL universe. Um, but, of course, the talking heads, they're all getting in on it. Um, but we're going to go with this. Nick Wright of Fox Sports, his take was incredibly stupid. He, re- he did his tiers of NFL teams after two weeks. And his, his, sta- his Saints take was, was, I don't know, maybe if he thought about it really hard to troll everybody or it's just so incoherent, incoherent and... I'm thinking he was brilliant to troll people or he just vomited it out. I don't know which one. But, Thomas, play the sound of Nick Wright explaining where he put the Saints in his NFL tiers. We're not going to be fooled by these teams, nor will we we be bullied by anyone, particularly people with oddly undersized tight shirts. Like, oh, if you're not talking about them, what are you doing today? Guys, I'm happy that these teams are 2-0, and I really like Geno and Mike McDonald. I think what Mike Tomlin does year after year is remarkable. Kevin O'Connell is one of the best coaches in the league, and Alvin Kamara's resurgence is one of the best stories in the league. None of these teams are contending for anything. And if not for the committee, if we were all just standing zealots, we'd have to be like, well, what do you want them to do? What do you want them to do? Be real contenders is what you want to do to move up the rankings. Uh, Kevin, let me, let, let me go. Let me go. go Don't ahead. even ask. Go ahead. <clears throat> uh, we want them to be contenders. Well, how do you, how, how do you become a contender? You win games. You can only beat the teams that are on your schedule that you have to play. They have played the JV Panthers and beat the brakes off of them, which after week one, you, Ralph, smartly said, <laughs> Beating the Panthers is one thing. Anybody can do that. But good, great teams That's right. beat the Panthers the way that the Saints beat them in week one. Week two, they pistol whip the Dallas Cowboys in Dallas to the point that the second half, you mostly only heard the Saints fans in the building, in Jerry World. A total domination of a team that was considered one of the better teams in the conference, even if they were a little shaky, still considered one of the better teams in the conference. So, yeah, Derek Carr, we went over this last, uh, last, we went over this recently. I don't want to say exactly when, (laughs) because who knows when this is going up, but we went over it recently on the Zoom call. Uh, Derek Carr is at worst the third best quarterback in the league right now. The Saints are, at worst, the third best team in the league right now. I'm saying at worst because they ain't the bronze medalist on my podium, okay? (laughs) Derek Carr, probably not the bronze medalist on my podium either. So you have to look at the here and now. The Saints are what it—you are what your record is. That's right. You're 2-0. If they go—if they come back home— and they beat the brakes off Philadelphia, or if they even win ugly, I don't care. I don't care if it's a 13 to 7 slog. If they beat Philadelphia and go to 3 and 0, the chances of them making the playoffs skyrocket. They, it was already at like 62.7, 63%, somewhere in that range for being 2 and 0. When you get to 3 and 0, it jumps up significantly. Yeah, I mean, eventually. Like, how do you become a contender? All you got to do. To be a contender is to make the postseason. Season, that's right. How you can't win the fucking Super Bowl unless you make the playoffs. Okay. You can't win the Super Bowl I don't September. care if you are the one seed or the seven seed. That's right. You make the playoffs and then and then you got a shot. If you are fighting 
for, you know, to win the division or whatever, you're technically a contender. That's right. You're technically a contender. I, I, this nebulous, these, this nebulous terminology, give me, give me what is a contender. Oh, you got to show, you got to show. Well, they have. That's right. They have. Like, what do you want? What do you want them to do, Nick? You spell it out, brother. You're the one on TV making the big money. Well, here's the here's the thing too that I find hysterical. Every team the Saints have beaten this year, as soon as the Saints beat them, they are declared a federal disaster area. Because let me tell you, Carolina going into that Saints game was not thought to be an abject disaster. They were thought to be bad. And they were thought, oh, they're still going to be bad. They're still going to oh, be in they last were year. improved. But they're better. They were improved if you listen to some people. Yeah, they were. I mean, they're going to be better. Power? You know, now, oh, everybody knew that Carolina was a disaster, and it's, it's not like playing a real team. And now oh, everybody knew that Dallas's run defense was terrible, and Mike McCarthy's not a good coach, and they were declining. Like, so that's what I find hysterical. And the Saints pissed the whip that Saints beat Philadelphia. They'll do it to Philadelphia again. They'll be like, oh, Philadelphia, they were 10 and 1 last year. Now they've lost, you know, eight of nine or whatever, whatever it is. And they tried to match Patricia on defense and it doesn't work. And Nick Sirianna is probably going to get fired. And the Saints are, are a pretender still. Um, if the Saints go 3 and 0 and you still call them a pretender, you're, you, you're, I, I, I don't know. You're, you're either, you're either, you're either willfully stupid. Mm hmm. Or you're just a fucking idiot. Well, and, and here's the thing with the Nick Wrights of the world. They know that if they're wrong about the Saints and they beat the drum about the Saints not being good, they can milk it all year and it plays for good television. Of and course. then when the Saints finally lose, they'll be like, see, I told you. Even though they went 15-2 and two and lost in the NFC Championship. I told you they weren't real contenders. Well, brother, hang on. If they like go 15-2, and two, if, if the Saints, listen, I don't think anybody is saying they're going to go 15-2. and two. I'd like to meet the person that says they're going 15-2 <laughs> and two and say, what drugs are you on and can we get it in the water supply? You I was on drugs when I said 11-6, and six, so I might need to take well, one more. But see, you... you <laughs> Even your drug-induced hysteria, you said 11 and 6. Nobody's exactly. saying 15 and 2. If they go 15 and 2, there ain't any – no Saints fan is going to let any slander against the specifically, team stand. Specifically to Nick Wright, the only thing that will convince him the Saints are anything and worth a damn is if they go to Kansas City and beat his Chiefs. That's the only thing that will convince him. And even then, Kevin, if the Saints beat Kansas City, he'll make excuses. He'll say, oh, our, our left tackle is terrible because we're playing a rookie. Oh, uh, Ferdy Pachinko or a running back or whatever it is. He broke his leg. He's not Isaiah playing. Isaiah Pacheco. Yeah, I, that's a first. Kevin knows more about the NFL depth chart of other teams than me. Well, uh, he's on I'm my sorry. fantasy football team. <laughs> there you go. There was a reason. So. But that, that's the only thing that will convince Nick Wright. I, th- I think, Kevin, we touched on it uh, in the Zoom call, which, by the way, uh, go to SaintsHappyHour.com, become a patron. You get access to our Zoom call where you can interact with me, Kevin, and Andrew on a personal level, ask us questions. It's amazing. You should do it. Um, we talked about it a little bit on the Zoom call, but I want to talk about here, not specific to the Saints, but the NFC in general, Kevin. Yeah. I look at it, and I see the San Francisco, who was supposed to be the best team in the NFC by a lot. Yeah. They're kind of beat up. And if they backslide, and they're not a 13-win team, if they're like a 10, 11-win team, I look around the rest of the NFC, I see Dallas. They ain't any better than the Saints. I'm damn sure that. Philadelphia, we'll see. Detroit lost to Tampa Bay and Baker Mayfield at home. Uh, Green Bay, they're young and exciting, but their quarterback's banged up, right? Right. And you the look ba- out west. The, the Bears, they, they the you Bears know, Caleb, can't. Caleb, Caleb Williams Hill, hasn't uh, hasn't. He's going to die. He's going to be dead soon. I mean, the way they're off right. The line and the Vikings, it. despite being two and zero, still have Sam Darnold as their quarterback. I, I, I you want to talk about not believing? You want to talk about not believing in somebody? 
Look north, everybody. Look north. Uh, Look weirdly, north. weirdly, I. This is gonna. It's a Saints podcast, and I know we're supposed to hate the Vikings, and I hate the Vikings, but I kind of weirdly believe in the Vikings. Not because of Sam. Not because I believe in Sam Darnold. But I believe in their head coach, Kevin O'Connell, and I really believe in their defensive coordinator, Brian Flores, who should be a head coach somewhere, but the NFL won't hire him again. So he's stuck in a job that he's overqualified for, and the Minnesota defense is sick, and I kind of believe in the Vikings. But What do you, um, what do you know? The NFL is conspiring against certain people or right. teams or things. Thing. So that's, that's, that's the thing. What, in your mind, would the Saints, before we get to the gambling stuff, which is fun, what, in your mind, would the Saints, what do they have to do to make the media just be like, God damn, I mean, I don't know, like, they, they are, they're the contender, and right now, they're the best team in the NFC, and like, there's, like, they, they don't, they don't want to believe it. But they're like, I can't, I can't, like, they are. Like, what do they have, what would they have to do to change when do you want them? Minds? When do you want them to, when do you want them to sort of come to that conclusion? Maybe by like. Give me a week. Halloween? By Halloween. Okay, let me look at the schedule here. By Halloween, they will have played everybody in their division one, uh, at least once, so. Win, win against everybody in their division. They will have played their three opponents from three opponents from the AFC West: Chiefs, Broncos, Chargers. Uh, I'd say you got to win all three. So you have to win all three of your games against your division opponents. Yeah. And then after that, well, shit. The only other one is the Eagles. So I'd I'd probably feel comfortable saying win all your NFC games. Win at least one of the Chiefs, Broncos, Chargers, and don't get blown out. Like keep it close till the final right. like five minutes of. So what uh, would their record be? What so, would their record have to be? One, two, three, four, five. They'd be six and two. They have to be six and. You think? Minimum? I'd say six and two, beating all the NFC teams on the schedule. I, I think that would get them, that would get land them as the, this is maybe the best team in the NFC. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. And then and it would, and they would, and they would hate saying it. Um, <laughs> Nick Wright, who is, I have to say, which is, is weird because, it, you know, a couple of years ago, I hated him. I absolutely just despised him. He was the person I hated the most. But I like, I kind of like him. Like maybe it's his Lamar, maybe it's his Lamar Smith. I mean Lamar uh, Jackson. Uh, Nike doesn't even take Nike will jokes. Uh, maybe it's I don't know. But like I despise Bill Simmons. I despise Colin Cowherd. Um, but Nick Wright, I I kind of like him. His takes are interesting. Uh, the only thing that's ever going to move him into positive Saints talk is beating the Chiefs, and even that isn't. Um, Kevin. People really like the gambling stuff we did last week. So if we're going to try to do it. I, hang on. If I told you. Yes. If I told you they would march into, they would march into Kansas City mm -hmm. and take the lead and never once trail in that game and win by two scores. We're talking minimum 10 points. Yeah. But they would have to lose at home to Sean Payton and the Broncos hmm. in prime time. What do you take? Ooh, that's a tough one. Because you see, I was thinking about doing the Falcons, but it's like, no, because you're never no, going to get that, because then, No, that's because then, no. It's too slanted. It's too slanted because it's a, a get, it's just like oh it's a, it's an it's an NFC game back in counting time. Right. Denver and Kansas City in the end have the same likely value of victory for the Saints in tiebreaker land which is not much at all. This one's hard Kevin because 
If you got to, if you say you you beat Philadelphia and you get to three and zero, and you beat Atlanta and you get to four and zero, you go to Kansas City and you win on Monday night, you're the fucking king of the NFL. Like if the Saints would go to Kansas City, I'm not win, even saying I'm not even saying you're four and zero going into Kansas. Well, City. I'll you, say it. You could be two and two. I'm just saying. I'm simply picking, regardless games. of what the record is. I'm I'm gonna make it that much more fun. You go to okay. Kansas City, you get to five and zero. Yeah, and you beat and you beat Patrick Mahomes by two scores. You're the fucking king of the NFL, like, right? Like, like there, there, there is no dispute. Like, you have the in wrestling parlance. I know you like this. I got yeah. the belt. I might not yeah. have the belt yeah. in January. I might not have the belt at Thanksgiving. But right now, son of a bitch, I got the belt. I'm right. the king. And right. that that week and that night after that game would be amazing fun. Listen, it could be a, it could be a wildfire, Tommy Rich. Uh, yeah. title reign where it's basically a week. <laughs> Maybe it's a Dusty Rhodes also, title reign where it's a month. Maybe right. it's a Ronnie Garvin title reign where it goes a few months, but then you but, inevitably drop it back but, to whoever the, the, the big dog is. But I got to also say, playing on a Thursday night and kicking the crap out of Sean Payton on a Thursday night is also enjoyable. On the flip side, losing to Sean Payton at home. Yes. On Thursday night. Right. No matter how good the Saints are, even if they, like, even if things are going really well and they, you know, they get to that game and they're four and one or four and two or, or whatever, only one loss or whatever, losing to Sean Payton at home will be <clears throat> annoying as hell. The ant, the, the mood, it could flip. I, I think, Kevin, the more I think about it, I got to take the Sean Payton win because I think. Losing to Sean Payton would do more to destroy the fun vibes of the 2024 season mm. than beating Kansas City. Like, I, and that's what I'm trying to protect. I'm trying to protect the good vibes. Saints Twitter, Saints fans, we're all united. If Sean Payton would come in Thursday night and like beat the Saints with Bo freaking Knicks, and especially if the Broncos are bad and they're yeah. like one win or God, God, if they're if they're like winless or something. Oh, that would be awful. So my instinct was to take the Chiefs and be undefeated after Monday night, and it would be glorious, and it would be fun, and it would. Yeah. But to protect the karma and the good vibes of the 2024 Saints, I got to defeat Sean Payton. I got, I got to have it on Thursday. With a half-awake Al Michaels. I got, that's what I got to have. Yeah. Yep. You, pro- you, might, you, you probably have swayed me with that. <laughs> And look, like, like that's me and you. We're like we're vibes, guys, right? Yeah. Like we're vibes, and I feel like the vibes. Yeah. You lose to Sean Payton, you put the vibes at risk in a way. Right. Where, right. where losing like, to Kansas City, losing yeah. to the defending Super Bowl champions with a goddamn alien as their quarterback in their building, you know, They're like, like you I just throw your hands up and say, ah, eh, yeah, like right. if the Saints, if the Saints go into Kansas City and they're. Let's say, let's say, best case scenario, they're four and zero, and we're like four and zero, we're riding high, and Patrick Mahomes drops three fifty and four touchdowns and three stupid throws on them, and the Saints lose by ten. The rest of America will be like, oh, see, the Saints are frauds and our oh, shit. Blah, the blah, Saints, blah. It, they could lose by twenty. Yeah, and, and I'm the, not there. And, and, and in the post game, we'll just be like, eh, AFC game, whatever. Nobody got hurt. We'll lick right. our wounds. We'll get back right. to it. Right, beat the but, box. But there's something about losing to Sean Payton. The t- it'd be like Malort, Kevin. It'll just linger. It'll <laughs> just linger, and I can't, I can't have it. I can't have it. Insider reference for people that listen to the podcast. They know, what Malort, they know, they know me, my history with Malort. Um, that was a, Kevin, that was a great question by you and a great segment. That's, that's, uh, that's great, top-notch podcasting by you hey the uh, sun shines on a dog's ass every once in a while okay i want i want to tell something to people about something else that's awesome hard hide punch tool strawberry whiskey is awesome it is a strawberry flavored whiskey blended with aged wheat whiskey american light whiskey cocktail and sons strawberry lemon syrup Fresh strawberries from Jonesdale Farm in Ponchatoula, Louisiana. It's 86 proof. The whiskey is blended and bottled at the Sugarfield Distillery in Gonzales, Louisiana. You can pick up a bottle wherever fine spirits are sold in Louisiana, Mississippi, Texas, Tennessee. To learn more and to find a location to get a bottle near you, go to hardhidestrawberrywhiskey.com. 
Hard Hide Ponchatoula Strawberry Whiskey is supporting Saints Happy Hour all football season long. So support the people who support our show. Grab a bottle of Hard Hide Ponchatoula Strawberry Whiskey today. All right, Kevin. Yes. Time to get to prop bets. Uh, I didn't guy. ask. I didn't. I, I told. I did, I forgot to remind you to prepare. But don't worry. I got. I got the prop bets. I got them all in front of me. You can ask me any question you want about players, touchdowns, combo bets. I got it all. So last week we did something that was really fun. People liked it, and I did my Ralph Marlboro hard hide guarantee. So this, and if if it happens, I do sometimes a shot, sometimes multiple shots of hard hide strawberry whiskey. This week, Kevin, my hard hide poncho tools strawberry guarantee, Rashid Shaheed, he goes a third straight week with a 50-plus yard touchdown. I will do three shots of hard hide poncho tools strawberry whiskey. All I need is another Rashid bomb touchdown for 50 yards. Boom. We're doing the shot. 50 yards or more. It has to be more. one. It has to be a touchdown. That's right. Of 50 yards or more. That's right. And last week, we stayed. Now, that could I be said, a trick. Now, just to, I, I want to I wanna just cover my bases here. It could be it. a s- crazy schemed run. That's right. Of over 50 yards and a touchdown. That's right. It could be, if he decides to field a kick return, it could be a kick return of more than That's 50 right. yards. 50-yard touchdown. Boom, okay. I'm drinking. If Rashid Shahid scores on a play of more than of 50 yards or more, three shots by you. Three shots by me. Okay. And I say, Let's make people, sure. said, people doubted me. I did it. I said, sack Dak Prescott three times. Mm-hmm. I'll do three shots. Boom. I did it. I'm a man of my word. I give what the people wanted. So that that is um, – that's my hard high guarantee. But the um, – the prop bets, Kevin, you know, last week we did, we did, me and you did some bets where we said, hey, if the Saints were to win, this is how it's, it's going to happen. And we were right. You know, you said Camara over 20, oh, what did you say? Over, over 20 touches. Uh, I said over, I think I said 17, 17, over 17 touches. I said Camara over 50, over, over 50 yards rushing and that sort of thing. And I said, oh, Shahid over 37 and a half yards receiving. If, if those things have to happen. This week, I'm going to go a different way. Well, we, we did, did say the game would be ugly, though, didn't we? We did. We did. If the Saints would win, we were wrong, wrong, wrong. Um, here's the thing that I, I'm going to go a, a different way on this week. If you think the Saints are going to win. I'm not going to focus on the Saints' offense. I'm going to focus on the defense, Kevin. I think if the Saints win this football game, you could do a parlay of Jalen Hurts under 40 and a half yard 40 and a half yards rushing, Saquon Barkley under 72 and a half yards rushing. Because I believe Philly is going to attempt to jam the ball down the Saints' throat. One, to keep the crowd out of the game, and two, to keep that crappy Philadelphia defense off the field. Uh I like that as a you know, if they're going to win, it's going to be this. However, if I was making bets, Jalen Hurts, like the, excuse me, the numbers I'm looking at, Saquon Barkley, the prop bet is 79 and a half rushing yards. Jalen Hurts, the prop bet is at 49 and a half. I would actually take the over on both. Um, because, let me pull this up, Jalen Hurts, rushing, the rushing has been, he's gotten 118 yards rushing in two games. In the two games he's played against the Saints, he's had banger rushing games. His passing, a lot of carries, right? It's a lot of right, carries. His passing has been, has been meh. Like, yeah, I, I, I do like the bet of taking him under two twenty five and a half. Mm. Oh passing. yeah, but I like the taking him over. Mm-hmm. Saquon Barkley. Saquon Barkley rushes. He's rushed for over two hundred yards in two games. Mm-hmm. So that's averaging one oh uh, one oh two per per game, and the bet here is seventy nine and a half. I feel comfortable giving that twenty yard. Uh, Giving that twenty-yard window, 
uh, that, like, I can see a scenario in which Saquon Barkley gets 85, 90 yards. I can see a scenario in which Jalen Hurts gets like 60 yards, 65 yards on the ground, throws for like a buck 70, a buck 80. Mm-hmm. And they yeah. make some plays, but the Saints defense holds them just enough to where they're not scoring touchdowns all the time. It's they do they sort of do what they did to the Cowboys where they they stop them cold and they force field, they force a couple of field goals or they make a, a turnover or two. So my two off the top are Barkley over 79 and a half rushing yards, Jalen Hurts over 49 and a half rushing yards. I'm going to go back to this guy again. Uh, actually, I'll, I'll, I'll throw another fun one at you. Okay. Derek Carr over one and a half rushing yards. Ooh, see, that's an, inter- that, that's an interesting one because all it would take, right, is one of those, because look, nobody is running more play action than the Saints, right? The Saints right. are running a, a, an amount of play action that is just ridiculous. All it takes, Kevin, would be one of those boots, right? He gets out, no one's open, and he's like, oh, crap, no one's open. Philadelphia linebackers suck, even though Saints fans were freaking out about Zach Vaughn getting a bunch of sacks week one. Their linebackers suck, and they're slow. Derek Carr, one eight-yard scramble, boom, you're there, right? Doesn't even have to be eight yards. All he has to do is third third and one. You think they're or, or third and third and two or something. You think they're gonna run, drop back to pass, somebody gets him out the pocket, he scrambles toward the sideline, sticks that arm out, mm-hmm. and runs right outside. Three yards, converts the first down, and there you go. Here here's a bet. It's risky because he's banged up. And it's even more risky because it's a specific touchdown. But Taysom Hill, he's been practicing this week. We don't have the practice report on Friday. But if you wanted to bet Taysom Hill the la- scoring the last touchdown of the game, hmm. plus 750. And, Kevin, that would be strictly a vibes bet in that the vibes are so freaking good for the Saints right now. What would send the Dome crowd into an absolute frenzy? That would be a game clencher or game winner from Taysom Hill. Plus 750 if you're so inclined. So that's him crossing the plane. That's him crossing the plane. It'd have to be the final touchdown of the game. But him crossing the plane. Because if you want to say what could put, what would make the Dome go apeshit, Taysom Hill throwing a touchdown pass to Derek Carr, who moonwalks in the end zone (laughs) and grabs his crotch again, and it's the game winner. Um, And next thing you know, the fan base is launching GoFundMes to cover the the cost of the fine. I mean... I mean, if we're just, you know, making up, you know... I mean, the Saints running... Why not? The Saints running the Philly special... On the Eagles and getting Nick Sirianni, Nick Sirianni fired would be amazing. Derek Carr, anytime touchdown plus 650, the final touchdown plus 3,400. Um, that'd, be the, that'd be the ultimate vibes Saints touchdown. Derek Carr scoring the game winner from Taysom Hill. That, Kevin, if that happened, that's just Clint Kubiak. Just rubbing his nuts all over the Eagles. I'm here right. for it. That, it would, that, feels, that feels like Team of Destiny shit. It would be. I mean, I That's mean. That's Team of Destiny stuff we, right there. I, the, I'd, you'd have, I'd need my phone. My wife would have to take away my phone because I would just be all Sunday night. I would just be going at people left and right. Um, but, uh, guys, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, hope you enjoyed the show. Uh, thanks for watching us. I hope you had as much fun as me and Kevin do on Friday. Kevin, I, lo- I the Friday show, it's, it's quickly becoming one of my favorite things uh, I get to do all week. Uh, please you're in follow. and you're out, folks. You're in and you're out. Yeah, and we give it's you a, a nice drive time pod. 
That's right. Please follow us wherever you get your podcasts and on all the socials. Become a patron to get some extra Saints Happy Hour content. You get access to all our private Saints fan community on Discord. You get extra podcast episodes like the Zoom uh, call replay. You get behind the scenes and more. Lowest tier starts at $5. And we also have a one a week of free trial, so you don't have to commit right away. And I almost forgot, we only have three more days of the secret discount gold tier. That ends Monday night when the game kicks off on Monday Night Football. So to get more information, go to patreon.com slash Saints Happy Hour. Thanks to Kevin for joining me. Thanks for Thomas running the show back at Poland like a pro, like he always does. We will see you after the Saints-Eagles game is done. Until then, the bar is closed.